So when the pressure in the blood vessels, this is the vessel, this is the hole, you see, where the, the pressure inside this tube is too high. That's what we call blood. Uh, it's too high and it reads 140 over 90 or higher. Then it means you are having high blood pressure. Okay. Um, I'm just going to answer your question before I continue. Okay. When we say hypo, hypo, hypo is when your blood pressure is low. But even this, with this, we measure it between two things. We have the upper one called diast uh, systolic and the down bit is called diastolic. Yeah. So when we say hypo, hypo is when the diastolic is about maybe less than 100, yeah? And the down bit might say maybe 40. That's hypotension. And when we say hypertension, anything from um, 121 over, over uh, 81 to 139, even let's say 140 over 90. It means you are getting hypertension. Are we, are we clear? Have I made myself clear? Okay, so let's move on. If there are no questions, let's move on. So you see the reason why this is a killer disease. Okay, so I'm going to talk about a little bit of anatomy. This is not part of it, but I just want you to understand. You see in life, um, how many years are all of us? We've been eating, drinking, doing so many things. And it's just like a kettle. If you boil water in kettle, you see that as time goes on, you find some you know, sediment in the scales in the, in the kettle. Yeah, this is what happens to us. If uh, whatever you eat, this is this blood vessels, you, you find you get these scales settling inside the inside the tube. You understand? And then as you go, if it's not treated, then it becomes a problem. So what happens is when the blood, you know, when the blood is, uh, when the heart, our heart is the one that pumps blood throughout the whole body. But it pumps blood through this artery, yeah, and the veins. So what happens is if the blood, uh, at, under normal circumstances, the blood will push your blood, the, the heart will push your blood through your vein gently without any problem. You understand? That is when we are all normal. When we have a normal blood pressure. The heart doesn't need to uh, need any effort to do or need any strength yeah, to push the blood. Because this tube is, is empty. There are no settlements. There, there, there's nothing. But because as we eat, as we age, whatever we do, the medications we take, these leaves sediment. It leaves scales in this tube. And because of that, it gives the heart a, pro a work to do by pushing, you know, using a very strong pressure or strong effort to push the blood through this tube to other parts of the body. So when this happens, it means the arteries are really damaged. They are in problem. And it makes your whole body uh, become, you know, you are in agony. You are in trouble if, if it's not treated. I don't know if I've made myself clear. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, um, Pastor's wife wants to know, Pastor Sarah wants to know the cause of it. I, I, we'll be there soon, yeah? I'm going there. So let's get this pro, uh, right. So um, when we say high blood pressure, it's the pressure in this tube, in the artery, yeah? And if this pressure is high from 140 over 90 and high, uh, um, and more, it means you have hypertension. Are we okay? Have we got it? Okay. So, okay. Uh, yeah. 
in addition to what Minister Margaret mentioned about um, high blood pressure, um, Pastor Sarah wants to know what causes it. Now, the causes of high blood pressure in conjunction with what she just mentioned, it's stress is one of the biggest killer in high blood pressure. And many people are walking around with stress and they don't even know that their body is stressed. And it can happen, if, if you was on the forum last night, you would have heard Minister Tisha talking about depression, which is stress leading onto all these issues. So when the body is stressed, what happens is we have chemicals in the body, hormones that releases all these chemicals. And once the chemical is released into the blood, the hormones start flaring up everywhere. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Do, does does um, anyone here or how many people do have an understanding of high blood pressure? How many people do have an understanding of it? Because it's good we know all about these things for our health because in everything, it's all moderation. Now, when the blood start to pump, as Minister Margaret said, it's getting higher and higher and higher. And if you look right here, at your neck, you can look in a mirror and you will see there's a vein there. And that vein, if, if it starts to um, get swollen up or you can see that vein, you know you are suffering with high blood pressure or hypertension. And it can be chronic hypertension over time because you, you're not aware because stress, the body is stress. Work stress, we have home stress, we have stress everywhere you you know what i'm trying to say about stress it's everywhere immigration stress social problem stress and pregnancy stress the body is stress so the cause of it is stress the bottom line is stress when the body is stressed the blood pressure elevated and this is one of the factors that causes the high blood pressure it's like you, you're going down to a, a, a bush or a jungle and you see a lion. And once you see that lion, the adrenaline level kicks in and you, your heart becomes faster and you start to run and you start to palpitate. <laughs> and, you know, I must, I must get away quick, quick, quick. So stress, any eruption in life, any challenges, a sudden event, a death in the family, a death of a close one friend, any illnesses, cancer, anything, is stress. And this is what um, causes the high blood pressure. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thanks, uh, Minister uh, Pastor Grace. Okay, besides stress, sorry, were you, were you going to? Okay. Apart from all the events that happen in your life, you know, uh, that bring stress, what about food? Does that bring stress? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm going to continue. I'm going to continue. So, no, no, let's, let's relax. Yeah? We, we are getting there, Minister Helen. Yeah, and Pastor so gave us 20 minutes between okay. me and Margaret. Yeah, so, yeah. we are working together. So, we won't go over the time. So, we have to be respectful of the time. Yeah, so besides stress, um, we also have, have a family history. If you, are happy, you have a family history of hypertension, stroke, heart attack, you're also sorry you're at risk. Excessive intake of salt and fat, oil, oil, the women. We want to make the stew, make sure that the oil is running in front, on top. So, um, who recommends that or according to research every one of us is meant to eat salt five grams that's like a teaspoon a day so if you are eating more than that please we have to stop it and sometimes the food some of the hidden salt is in the food that we eat yeah okay so, and if you have high blood pressure, please don't add salt to your diet. Yeah. And then, sorry. 
Did you hear that? Okay. The other point is physical inactivities. This is just lack of exercise. I'm not going to stretch this. Yeah? I know a lot of us don't do exercise. Yeah? Overweight, when you are overweight, when you are getting old, yeah? Yeah, so the reason why when you are getting old, like that demonstration I said, the more you get older and you don't, you know, you don't look after yourself, this tube keeps getting narrower and narrower and narrower. And then that makes it even more worse. Yeah? Okay. We also have alcohol intake excessive alcohol intake let me let me cover it nicely yeah excessive alcohol intake africans and caribbeans uh, we also for some reason this is what the research says we are subject to high blood pressure south asians people from south asian descent they also cooperate yeah Certain medications that we take, medicines, the medicines that we take anyhow from anywhere can also subject us to getting high blood pressure. And then um, our lifestyle, yeah. actually it's interwoven. It's part of uh, the way you lead your life. Alcohol, not, uh, not um, you know, exercising. I mean, everything, the food that you eat yeah. and all that. You, know, you need to, you know, it subjects you to getting hypertension. We also have um, a low diet. People who, who have a deficiency of vitamin, vi uh, some vitamin deficiencies like zinc, calcium, magnesium, and potassium. If these things are low in your diet, you, you'll be subjected to getting hypertension. Yeah. For now, that's the little I, I have for you. That's the courses. So, if there are any questions, we can please we can ask, ask questions. Then, please go. ask questions on high blood pressure. Go ahead. Hi. Um, my question is in relation to stress. Um, I think a lot of Africans, we know we're stressed, but we don't know how to manage it. So, what kind of things would you recommend as nurses in terms of therapy, counseling, addressing maybe generational habits and things of that nature? Yeah, I think stress has got so many, you know, there are so many ways of, of getting yourself stressed. Okay, let me give you an example. Let's say I'm having my party, birthday party here today. And I want you to have a gold dress, bag, shoes and all that. You understand? So you don't have it, and you decided to, you know, either rush around or, you, you know, you are rushing to get money to buy it, get the tailor to sew, and all that. You know, these are stre unnecessary stress you are giving to yourself. If you don't have the gold dress or gold bag, and the, why, why, you just wear anything. I should appreciate when you come, when you come in. It's not about the dress you are wearing. Yeah. I don't know if I've made it myself clear. So sometimes we even give ourselves necessary stress. stress. There are so many stresses. Yeah. Husband stress, wife stress, yeah. job stress. Every stress, it, it comes in every way. But some of, the, some of the stress we do, we give it to ourselves. If you can't attend that party, it's not, it's not the end of the world. Yeah? So some of it we need to sit down and look and reflect and resolve things to ourselves. Have I made myself clear? Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. Exercise Hello. is one of the, yeah. you so exercise or yeah. you go, you can go and do yoga. There is a lot of things you can do to um, alleviate stress. And, um, sorry, can, can oh. I just want because I mentioned about cancelling and therapy, and I think that's the point that I was trying to Sorry. get from you guys. Cancelling and therapy, because mm -hmm. a, a lot of black people, specifically Africans, we don't speak about what's going on in here. 
Okay. So, yes. what kind of organizations, what kind of things would you recommend, both for the older and younger generation, mm -hmm. to allow us to speak about things like molestation, all these different things that's happening in people's lives that causes people to be stressed, if that makes sense? Okay. This topic, stress, is so broad, and I think it's going to be have to be a continuation. But I agree with what Sister is mm -hmm. saying over there, because last night on the forum, we were saying these things, and we were saying, if people have questions, please ask. As long as his children is not like, mm -hmm. it's under 16 here or under 15, you know where they don't understand, but we we suggest if you're having issues like these, you would um, seek um, some counseling from the services like the NHS has got services out there for, for you to access their service and there are private, um, some private ones too. So going to the gym, as I mentioned before, exercise is good, meditation is good, interacting with people, your peers. If you have a confidant, speak to that person, someone you must get I mean, some of us would say, oh, I'm not telling anybody or somebody because they might go and tell and tell and tell and tell a friend and then before you know it, it escalated. But you must find someone who you can trust and sit down and talk to that person what is bothering you because this is it. A lot of us, we bottle things inside and don't speak about it and you are dying slowly and the stress of it, it will just kill you because stress is the biggest killer in England and Wales, in the whole world, stress. So we have to tackle the root cause and by going to the gym, my job, I have a stressful job Every day I'm stressed, but when I finish work, I try to go to the gym at least two, three times per week. Sometimes I'm sleeping, driving down the road, and I'm heading towards the gym because I have to be, you have to look after yourself. You can't sit down and eat a plate of food and then you go to bed. You can't do that, you know. You have to help yourself, and we, 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 Education and knowledge is very powerful. If you don't know, you don't know. But if you, for example, us Africans, we like to eat nice food, the yam, the plantains and all that. And we eat late nights too. And when you go to bed and sleep all sleep, what do you think going to happen to the body? The body is already stressed with the amount of food you eat as well. Because you, 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 the food you eat is nice, but it can also kill you. I'll give you an example quickly, short one. Um, a friend of mine, her daughter is 27 years old. She's got a stroke. She's in the hospital. So it's not just uh, middle-aged elderly people. These things are happening to young people, the younger people, and all because of obesity, because we are eating and eating on all these Burger Kings and the fast food diet. All these things are contributory factors. To it. So we have to watch our diet, look into what we are eating and what you're doing. You're, you're not exercising, but you're eating all these um, garbage you're putting in your body, really. And you're not exercising to burn out the, the, the calories. So over to Sister. I think uh, uh, Minister Tisha wants to contribute. Yes, I was going to um, say that stress management is different for everyone. That's so there's different techniques said. to deal with different stress or stresses. So one of the things, move away from the stimuli, you know, or as the Sister Grace says, speak with someone. There are therapists as well. There is online therapy that you can access as well. There is online counselors that you can access. And off the top of my head, I'm just remembering mind. You can call mind and ask for advice, or you can speak with the GP. Just make a phone call, and they can direct you, depending on what services is available in the area. If it's something that has been a trauma issue, say, for example, childhood abuse or, you know, sexual abuse or anything like that. There is also trauma-focused therapy, which you can access, and that's a different type of therapy from the normal, you know, psychotherapy that you would access. Amen. 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 Questions, um, questions. Uh, so Time's running out. So, sorry, before you ask that question, let me just add a little bit. Um, like I said, um, it depends on what sort of stress, which the minister has also uh, uh, mentioned it. But uh, the research in this country is saying that 
Africans, yeah? Depending on, regardless of what we're going through, we don't seek for help. Yeah? And that's really bad. Wherever you go, it hits you. They hit it to you on your chest. Boom! You guys don't ask for help. And you are shy. Whether it's stigma, whether it's what. So let's stop that behavior. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, would I have like a question. To, yes, question, please. I would like to go to the area of uh, uh -huh. immigration stress. Okay. When you look at Africans here, we can't compare our mode of living or our ways with the white people. Those white people, I think some of them, they are, give, they are given speech. No, please, let me come in. I'm coming. Like we black, when we come here, you have to go, you have to make all ways, you walk, you eat. Nobody is going to give you anything. You pay your rent, you do everything. So when you are looking at that, those things bring stress. Oh, then, yeah. <laughs> when you are looking at immigration or something too, People look at, ah, all right, my something going to renew. They look at starting around multi, uh, that amount of money to be taken. And despite you are still working on that thing. And you don't want to go back to Africa where there are hell, someone described as a hell zone. So how can we control all this and make life more habitable for people? <laughs> I myself being a victim from um, immigration <laughs> for lovers and stressors as the grace of God kept him here today alive. <laughs> Before you leave your country, think. Don't come here and tell yourself you're going to run off. This is not your land. This is, and there are restrictions here, barriers that are in the way to hinder you from achieving anything. So before you leave home, know that you've got a place to stay and it's a reliable one. You are coming into a job because as a man or a woman over 18 and you come into this country, you have been independent back home or you have been relying on relatives if you're younger and you come here now number one this place is cold full stop problem number one <laughs> when this cold hits you it's a different thing from africa cold that's stress number two appropriate clothing you don't have and you didn't come with enough money because the money you borrowed was just enough to pay the pain flare so you are here wahala so you have to come prepared <laughs> for this prepared in your mind yeah. and then when you come you begin to meet problems you don't have organic food and all of that kind of thing health begin to deteriorate if you're not eating properly again you don't have papers you can't go to the doctor you're hiding and dodging around here right. things go pear shape in my line of work you know it's so sad the things that I see and I give God thanks because I've had certain experience with certain things so I'm able to say okay turn this way or turn that way there's charities out there there as well that support people to access you know certain things if you do not have the resources you know and there's I think some housing charities as well so, yeah that that support so it's to know what to tap into to get that support that you need and as someone rightly said as um, people of color we don't really talk one we have trust issues we ain't trusting nobody Number two, if you have immigration problem, it's not something you're going to tell everyone because the same person you spoke to will inform them that you are here because we <laughs> sell each other out. And, you know, it's a shame we don't have enough time to discuss this. I'm just going to cut it off here. But, yes, you've got to know where you're standing. But we've got a pastor in the house, and we've got people in the house that, you know, sort of like, no. So pick who you speak to. Speak to your pastor, and he will sift out who you can speak to to give you advice that is all sister priscilla I have a burning question thank you minister tisha um mine is not related to stress or anything because in the beginning you um you, you mentioned about the fact that we do not know what actually causes hypertension until the later stages when it becomes worse when you get stroke literally on the, on the face of dying. So how can one know that they're going through the process of hyper, having hypertension or their blood vessels are, are clogged? Would that be a change in the skin? Would that be a rush on the skin? Because the body actually shows you signs 
that you're, that, that you're decaying, you know? So would that be, you know, heart palpitation? Would that be, you know, blurry vision? What, what, what do you think are the common signs okay. that, so it can help? Uh, yeah, uh, some of the um, indicators are like, you start getting headache, headache, and um, you feeling dizzy, you can't be lightheaded and you thinking, oh, I just feel dizzy today, and you leave it, you ignore it, and this one is not. Can you hear? Yeah. And um, you, you just leave it. For example, my husband will have an headache and he just leave it, and oh, it's just an headache, it's a night job, and, and leave it, yeah. And then here's down the line, or months down the line, then you go to A and E because this same headache will just knock you out, you know, and you go to A and E and they do scan and the doctor realize you've got a, um, a clot there. So these are, there's indicators there, there's signs, feeling dizzy, headaches, feeling unwell, generally unwell. Keep a tap with your doctor, not even doctor, because these days the doctors are on strike and you are can see a doctor now, but please, every household, I'm begging you, buy a blood pressure monitor. Let me see the hands of who have a blood pressure monitor in their house. Well done, well done. Because these days, you go to Haney, and it's urgent care now. So when you go there, they're just doing the bare minimum, and they are treating priority, priority patient. If you're not dying, they are not going to see you. They are not going to see or they just fob you off and tell, give you paracetamol or ibuprofen and send you home. You're on your merry way. But because uh, my brother there said, we are black people. We don't talk. We don't talk. We need to talk. Talk to, to each other. Talk to your husband. Talk to your wife. Talk to your friend. I'm having this bad ache. That friend might say, go to the hospital or check. When last did you check your blood pressure? What are you eating? Too much salt in your diet. You didn't realize. Then it's increasing in your body and gradually builds up. Over the years, it builds up as plaque Start to hydrate the blood vessels and also for your kidneys and, and, and all that. Filtration of the kidneys. So don't leave it and say, oh, it's just a headache. Um, I'm, I'm not bothered and I'm going to work here. Yeah. Go get it checked out. You never know. Brother Jeff. Um, so mine was a contribution. I think it was going back to the research that um, Nurse Margaret said, uh, Asians and Africans are high in uh, stress or getting this uh, infection. So what I was saying is in terms of Africans and Asians, it's a sense of expectation. Even for young people, you're going to school. There's this expectations of you. You have to do a degree. You have to do a master's. You have to get married. There's this expectation. Even before you finish college, you already know this stress. You have to do this. This is what you have to do. Um, and then also another contribution that I wanted to add is, um, again, we came there, is the kind of food that we eat. Most of our food is starch, which then evolved, get, it turned into sugar. So that's something that we have to be mindful of. And I think that's why most Asians and Africans, we are characterized in that area. Amen. 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 Yeah, just um, to continue with the signs and symptoms, um, know your numbers, yeah? I want to add, uh, say something. You know, with the stress, look, if you want to think about the stress, you, then you better pack your things and go to uh, Ghana. You understand? I noticed something of late. Um, sometimes I take Uber to work, yeah? And any time I get a white person, driving me to work, the price of the Uber goes up. Anytime it's an African or Asian, the price comes down. And this has been continued for a while, and I'm like, what, what's going on? You understand? So which means the Uber driver who is a, a, a non-Caucasian or who is a non-white will be working billion times to get the money that a white person will understand so but because our government and we ourselves are not doing much to help ourselves that's why we are here sorry about that yeah minister just, just a contribution okay okay um 
what I was just going to say is that us as black people, we have to learn to give ourselves time, time to rest. Yeah. We are always running after money, but it's not as important as your health. So when you have that time, if you see white people or people that are of British, we are always going on holiday. Once in a time, you just give yourself time and go on holiday. Even if it's not outside the country, if you give yourself time, you also have time to rejuvenate your body, to think clearly, and to take away the stress. Yeah. You know, Amen. sometimes Amen. even like I've just come now, and in fact, it wasn't a holiday for me. I went uh, with a 96 year old to France, and we were by the Pyrenees, and it was just like a village in Africa, you know? You are breathing fresh air. You are not even thinking of the rush in, the, in, in, in London, you know? All you do while you are there is just relax. And even the food is fresh and that sort of thing. So sometimes let's just give ourselves time to relax. Thank okay. You. Thank you, amen. Amen, amen. Okay, so we continue if you don't have any questions, okay. Okay. Yeah. We're taking too much carbohydrate food. And for this cause, uh -huh. we are victims yeah. of this uh, kind of hypertension, sure. this diabetes, and all Stroke that. Stroke and all Can that. you elaborate a bit or advise? How much intake of this carbohydrate food should we take in a day and time so that we can align ourselves in that respect? Because uh, okay. with me, I can't do away with my banku and, <laughs> <laughs> and with my fufu and all that, you know, okay. despite the <laughs> ill effects. Uh -huh. So please. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, all right. I think um, actually I'm, I'm coming towards the management. So can you give me some time? Right. Then we, yeah. So um, it's uh, just about the question that Sister Priscilla asked, you know. Um, when it comes to hypertension, you need to be diagnosed by a doctor. It shouldn't be you yourself. And because of the way, our way of life, the stress is always there, the other things there. Once in a while, your blood pressure can go up above, you know, from 140 over 19 and above. When it does that, it's normal because once in a while, because of the stresses and everything going on. Yeah? But you cannot say to yourself, I've got hypertension. It's only the doctor who can diagnose you. And this has to be done maybe on different occasions. So today you've come, your blood pressure is 150 over 90. Then the doctor calls you again another time and it's still maybe 140 over 90. You understand? Which means this calls for action, yeah? This means you've got hypertension. So it's the doctor who is going to tell you. But meanwhile, having all these blood, high blood pressures, you might not have a, feel any symptoms or any sign. Yeah? Okay. So like she has said, uh, some of the things, if the blood pressure continues to be high and it's not, you know, treated, some of the signs you may have, apart from what she said, severe headaches, um, and yeah, anxiety, eyes will be popping up, blurred vision, and other vision changes, you know, you feel uncomfortable in your eyes, there's tension in your eyes, you get confused, you get nosebleed, you get dizziness, you understand, headaches, um, sometimes your heart, you get breathing problems yeah 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 you get a uh, buzzing buzzing in your ears sometimes abnormal heart beats 
you know, sometimes if you, I don't know if you've uh, observed it, you can have a frontal headache. The headache is there, but it's more or less frontal. You could feel that something is not all right. So when you feel all these signs and symptoms, please don't take it lightly. You might take your paracetamol, yes, but just go to your GP. All right? You can also have the stroke before you even know the stroke is, you've already collapsed. Yeah, but then, sorry, there is difference between, especially if you have diabetes, in addition to hypertension, then you are finished. Because diabetes too, when you have hypo, you can collapse or you can become unresponsive. So when you collapse, we have to find out, is it the hypertension or is it your diabetes that is causing that? Yeah. Uh-huh. in front of me we were all and I said why, why, did, why did I come here because I know what is causing that mm -hmm. and I want to know what GP will tell me but we are all patients because I know already what causes that so when I went there he also opened and then he was sitting there he was telling me this is it so in this case for me not to go there what should I do <laughs> because when I go there we are all going to on the computer, already have already yeah, checked it, and I know what causes. I want to get the advice, but you are sitting with them. In this case, I want to stay away from them. What I, am I supposed to do? That's Symptoms it. or mm -hmm. different um, illnesses. Illnesses. Mm -hmm. So when they are going onto the computer, is actually to. Uh, and also ha having your history is to actually pick the actual illness you have because you can have with a you can go with a headache it might not be a headache or you can go with your leg aching maybe it's DVT or something like that something different to what you were actually thinking because at the end of the day you are not a doctor they have to go through all the things they've studied to make sure that they are actually giving you the right diagnosis not just going on, on word of what you've said. Well, maybe, maybe it's your lifestyle. It will prob <laughs> then it will probably be your lifestyle. If you're going with things like, for instance, they are talking about now high blood pressure. We know in order for us to stop going from the thing, we have to start looking at our lifestyles, what we do, yeah. what things are bringing stress in our lives, mm -hmm. and try and eliminate all that. And also, you know, just giving ourselves enough rest and that sort of thing. So those are the things. It's your lifestyle so that you don't keep going back with the same issue. Look into what you are eating. Your diet is most important. And the food that you eat, also the portion size. Because um, <laughs> before, like when I was younger, um, I like food. I love food. And I, I, I would eat a big plate of food. I didn't know. I didn't have the knowledge to know that I shouldn't be eating all that food. And then you've got the protein there, which is the meat. You have in like three pieces of chicken, three pieces of yam plantains and all that carbohydrate thing and it's built up look at the portion size moderation now cut it down to like two slices of yam thin slice not the big um, slices one piece of chicken is enough and you don't need three pieces of chicken and you have to change up your diet change like uh, include more vegetables and fruits in your diet we know that everything we eat have salt and sugar in it so cut down cut down on the portions and you can also have your your breakfast for the other way around you can have your dinner for lunch 
and you can have your breakfast for probably later on. You have a light meal in the evening and rest. Rest is very important and sleep. How many of us sleep seven to eight hours a night? How many of us do that? Because sleep is a part of healing. And if you, the body don't rest, some chemicals does not get released in the body and it affects your nerves, the nerves that wired you up because we all wired up with the organs and all of these connected together and you will get pains in your feet, your lower extremities and fingers and all that if you don't get rest and you get agitation, palpitations, you get all of that pain, anxiety. Before you, the, the, the best thing to do is tackle the root cause of it, find out what's happening to you and then you can deal with it. If, if you don't know, you're going to end up get sick and end, end up in the hospital where they have to manage it but it's best you manage it yourself from before it get worse. Prevention is better than cure. Brother Jeff. Um, just a quick, just because you mentioned sleep. So what, what, what do you think someone that does not have, get enough sleep, what would be a good advice to give them what to do to get enough sleep? Not that I don't get enough sleep, but you, you, says you sleep for a very short amount of time. You would wake up automatically. That's um, me. Actually, sleep makes you lose weight i know i'm not saying i'm not saying sleep is not good okay i'm saying so for for example i can go to bed um 11 in the night okay. by before five i'm already awake uh -huh. and not because i want to be awake uh -huh. i can't sleep okay minister headlines the hand is up Usually, if you want to have enough rest, it's how you prepare yourself before you go to bed. Uh, some people will go and do some exercises, walk long walks, and have showers, and that will help you to relax and go into bed. And also, when you get into bed, try to take away m the mind of thinking of everything that's been going on, because I know that when I do that, I can't sleep. You know, I'm thinking, I try to switch off and Very even good, just yeah. put music on or you, 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 you don't watch television or don't play on your, fo on, your, on your mobiles before. In fact, they say two hours before you sleep. You shouldn't be on uh, watching televisions or on your mobiles, you know, those are the things that uh, thing. But a nice walk just before you go to bed, when you come back, your mind is free and just go back, go to sleep. No, please, I think this is this uh, is peculiar to me. What uh, Pastor Jeff just said is very peculiar to me. Like, oh, Brad Jeff, okay, yes. Uh, like, for a case, as I as a case study, in Nigeria before, I don't sleep hardly. It took around 11, 12 before I sleep. Then when it gets to around 4, I'm up. There's no way. It's, I don't go to my poetry to do things, then back to work. Then I'll get here too. I'm still maintaining the same system. So when I interview, not that personally, I don't put things in mind. I don't like, I don't, but I know it's peculiar to men. A man shouldn't just sleep anyhow. Yes. But at times, you should find a time to have a deep rest. Okay, occasionally, maybe twice in a week, you should have time to, to have a deep rest. But when it comes to men, we care for many things. And then you are too busy. You prepare, yes, completely. Uh -huh. So be, that's why it's a bit, uh, that's why it's very common to men. So uh, that's how I can pick it. Uh, so, sorry, Satisha, I'll, I'll get back to you. And uh, Rajev, besides that, you also have to try and put the light off. I know when you want to have a, a very good sleep, you put the light off. Yeah? You do, you've you been doing it? Yeah, we are thinking about, uh, you know, sorry about that. Okay, Minister Satisha, please speak. Yeah, I will add to the sleep, but before I do that, I had a point around the blood pressure. 
So if you do your blood pressure monitoring at home and the systolic and the diastolic, which is the high one and the low one, they are in treble numbers, say 152 over 100, 101, you know, all both of them, the top and the bottom, they are in treble numbers. That's the cause for concern. You need to let your GP know. So you try it and you try 30 minutes later and you try it again and you write those down and let the GP know if there's any lump, numbness in the arms, um, any pins and needles, any pain along the neckline here, going down to the arms, also inform the GP as well about that. Mm. Um, secondly, on the sleep, try a bit of mindfulness. Go on YouTube, look for mindfulness video. Try a bit of mindfulness, a little deep breathing exercises, and as they say, turn off the lights and, you know, just as they say, count the sheep. <laughs> and, and you know you'll find yourself being able it's also the body clock as you rightly said I can relate to that I went to bed at 1am 2am in the morning but by 6, 7 I'm, I'm up because the body clock as well is like that so it's for you if it's not a work day to tell yourself I need to go back to sleep and you you know continue with your sleep Brother Jeff, go to bed early. If you used to go 11 o'clock, try back the time and go 9, 9 o'clock or 10 because three hours sleep is not good for you. Definitely affect your physical being. So you have to sleep. If you don't sleep, you are dying slowly. You're killing yourself because the chemicals that release is when you sleep, when you walk about in the daytime, it does not re get released. So it's a built up in the body. So make sure, I know you have children, get them off to bed by seven o'clock. Have your quality time by nine o'clock, you finish and you'll be in bed and get enough rest. Yeah, and at least seven to eight hours sleep. Yeah. Don't put six there, otherwise they will have <laughs> seven to eight, please. For our own health. You'll be doing it before you know you are finished. Yeah? I also don't sleep early. And one day I became unresponsive at work. That's how serious it is. Yeah? So these things that we are saying, we have experienced it ourselves. It's not because we are just here. To, we are all here to learn from each other. So let's take it serious. Yeah? Okay. Five minutes more. Okay. Okay. Um, I think what I wanted us to talk is about the management, you know, which is the most important thing that we need. But then I wanted to tell all of us, including myself, about the complications. You see, as I demonstrated it to you uh, um, about the artery, the more narrower your artery is, becomes, the harder it is for blood to flow to other parts of your body. So, for example, when the blood vessels in your eyes are too narrow, it, get, it gives you blindness, poor vision, and, and all. So when you start having eye problems, but I'm not saying that might be hypertension. Yeah, if you have diabetes, it you, you can also subject you to having eye problems, poor vision, blindness, you know, and all that. Yeah. The other thing, when these uh, blood vessels, when they are narrowed or stiff, uh, in fact, they can become stiff, narrowed and narrowed in your, you know, uh, kidneys, brain, um, heart, legs. So all this narrowing stops blood flow to all these areas. So people get stroke, heart attack, kidney diseases, you know, legs, sometimes people's legs are chopped off. We call it amputation. So let's be serious. This is a very serious condition. Yeah? So let's be careful and look out after ourselves. Like People have said, um, you, we all need to have blood pressure machine. But actually, I was going to recommend there's one that has been recommended. If you've bought it already, fine. But there's one that I was going to recommend for you, or I could say if I can get it for you guys. We need to have it 
at least once a week, check your blood pressure. There's one that you can put it on your wrist, you know, which it can record. Yeah? You don't need much effort to fix it on yourself. Let's check it. If it gives you, uh, like uh, Sister Tisha is saying, well, about the numbers, you should know your numbers. You should know your height. You should know your weight. You should know your blood pressure. If the blood pressure is w everything that you check, lesser, maybe 118 over 70 or 78 to 120 over 80, yeah? you know at least you are in safe hands. Anything from 121 to 139 over 90, you know you are at risk. From 140 over 90 and above, please don't sit down. Yeah? Go and see your GP. It's very important. If you are at work, tell your boss, this is a matter of life and death. It's not about yet the money. Yeah? Okay. So we're going to talk about the management. Okay. We've actually spoken a lot about management, but I'm just going to add a few to it. Yeah? And uh, our time is actually almost up. So the management is about the medication. After you've been diagnosed, of being hypertensive, you are given medications. And you need to listen to the doctor's instructions, what the doctor says. You take it accordingly. Don't go and give some of the medication to uh, um, Florence or, or Matthew because she's also having the same issue. Yeah? This is what we do. Instead of taking that dose, you go and give it shade because you are being sympathetic or empathetic or kind. That is wrong. Yeah, look after your body. And if he or she needs help, send, uh, advise him or her to go to the GP. Also, when you are taking those tablets, what you need to be mindful about, all these tablets we take have got side effects. When they are giving you side effects, that's even if it's the one that is going to cure your hypertension, you have to stop taking it and go and see your GP. All right? So that's about the medication. And in addition to what Minister Margaret said about the medication, it goes by age, weight, and height. So make sure you follow the dose, the correct dose, and um, don't give it to friends and families because yeah. it can affect them as well. Mm. And blood pressure and diabetes, cholesterol, heart problem, all those linked together. I'm supposed to do this slide on diabetes, but we are running out of time. Mm, so, so we have to continue this talk another time okay. because okay. it's very broad, huge topic. Mm. So mm. we just have to take mm. care of ourselves, brethren, mm. okay. because nobody's doing it for us. Yeah. So we're going to speak about the diet. The la that is going to be last, the management. But I'm going to mention on, uh, touch on certain things. Women and men be having you know we eat i know we cook some of us are good cooks yeah but how sure are you that you're having all the necessary nutrients in the, in your food it's about the nutrients it's not about how big or how the starch how you know it's about what you are taking in and we ideally we have to have a balanced diet yeah where everything is included but we're going to talk about the food so these are a little few advice I would like you people to take. Take calcium and magnesium tablets. When these, you will have them, they lower your blood pressure. Yeah? Also vitamin C. Okay? Take plenty of fish, salmon, sardine. All these lower your blood pressure. And you could also be taking supplements like omega-3, you know, supplement now they've improved it three nine you know mm, yeah. name it, they've really improved it yeah so have the habit of having it also garlic 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 i know some of us use some of us don't according to research it relaxes the blood 
the, the vessels. Yeah. So once it's relaxed, you know, your circulation will be good. Yeah. And if you're on some medication, do not take garlic, ginseng, mm -hmm. ginger, and um, certain herbal food mm. you mustn't take. Okay. Yeah. Uh, besides that, you see the medication that we take, we should know our medications. Don't just take it because Kwame prescribed it to you. Mm. Know what it does. Yeah. It's only by knowing your medication that you know that if I have to take garlic, no, that medication yeah. doesn't go with garlic. Yeah. Even there are some drugs, two drugs, you know. Yeah, mm. they, they yeah. work, they fight against each other. Saga. Yeah. You understand? So if you don't know your medication, you are killing yourself. Yeah. Yeah? And grapefruit as well. Yeah. If you're on blood pressure medication, do not take grapefruit. Okay. Thank you. So about the salt, 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 less salt intake. We need to take six grams of salt. That's about a teaspoon every day. Yeah? So those of us who have lovers of salt, please, let's limit it. And we season our food with other seasons as well. All purpose, fish seasoning, all that. Who does that? We use salt and we had more additives to it. So if you use in salt, don't use those additives. If you use the additives, don't use the salt. If you have high blood pressure, do not use those things at all because it's just make it worse. Okay. And in addition, the oil, the fats, saturated fats, trans fats, these are all not acceptable. Yeah. So if you really want to cook, um, one of the recommended oils is virgin oil. If somebody says virgin oil, he, has, he or she hasn't said anything. Mm. Extra virgin oil. Okay? And just a little. I'm coming. Okay. So about fruits and veg. Eat 8 to 10 servings, uh, servings of vegetables and fruits per day. I know we don't like eating fruits and vegetables. Because in Ghana, I'm only talking about the Ghanaians. I don't know about the other. We, 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 that's, that's not what we're trained. We have the fruits all, all right, but we don't eat them. Yeah. And do you know something? Let me tell you a secret. These fruits and vegetables is actually good for your teeth. If you see any, any person getting rotten teeth and all that, the person is not eating enough fruits. Yeah? All right? Okay. So um, now we're getting back to the food. So the food, the food, the food. Okay. Um, under the food, I'll put the food under the, our lifestyle. Our lifestyle, how, man, how much exercise do we need? We need, yeah, 30 minutes a day. If walking, running, mm. you don't need to go to gym. To pay money, mm. keep walking, brisk walking. This morning I did mine before I came to work, I came to church. Yeah, and if you have stairs, you can go up the stairs, up and down, up and down the stairs, and that's thirty minutes done. Yeah, that's it. You can walk ar in in COVID time. People was walking around exactly. in their flats mm. for exercise, thirty mm. minutes every day. Okay. Mm. And then alcohol, those of us who take alcohol. I, I'm not saying we shouldn't take alcohol, though. Excessive alcohol. I've polished it for ourselves, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Moderation. Okay, yeah. so let's talk about the food quickly. You know, we, wha we have what we call healthy diet. Healthy diet is actually a mixture of so many things that gives you a healthy diet. So we need carbohydrates in our food. Don't get me wrong. But it shouldn't be too excessive. We need fats and oil. We need proteins. You know, that's meat, you know, beans. You know. Milk, cheese, and all that. We need them in our bodies. We need what else? Come on. Somebody should continue for me. 
we uh, let's interact because yeah, it's let's open. Let's let's this one, know, let's interact. Open. So the mm -hmm, the more you, you discuss, the more you, you, you get it right. Yeah. Vitamin C. Okay, the vitamins. Yeah. And don't forget the vitamin D as well. We need yeah. that for our bones, mm. and it helps mm. us. It help the bone density, mm. and also it helps with our mood and sleep as well. Okay. Vitamin D. Minerals. Mm -hmm. iron. iron. We iron. need iron for the for the women who are anemic. Mm -hmm. We we need um, a certain amount of iron balance in the body because if you don't, you can c also collapse because lack of blood and oxygen to the brain, all, all that. So make sure you are taking your iron, but don't go and just take iron because you can be iron overload. You have to s seek advice from the doctor and um, know the amount of iron you are going to take. Okay. So about the food, all right, we're almost done. Thank you. About the food, the carbohydrate, we you know we have our rice, we have our bancon, we have, you know, potatoes, we have chips, we have all this, you know. Actually, this should be another topic that I need to discuss with you, yeah? So we're just going to just rush it, but I'm going to prepare and get, bring you the actual figures about diet. So the the the, the trick here is after your stew, your soup, or whatever, trying to limit your salt, trying to limit your oil, also increasing increasing the fruits and vegetables. So like if I give you, uh, if I serve you rice, truthfully, the, the vegetables should be more than the rice. You understand? It should, rice shouldn't be more than the vegetables. And that's where we have our, the, we, the we miss it. Understand. So about three to four spoonsful of rice with a heap of vegetables. vegetables. Your meat, the meat normally should be lean meat, not with fat. Understand. You could eat chicken. Chicken, try and peel off the skin, skin and remove all the fat. You, you can add eggs, fish, and all that. But this is, as I'm saying, this is another thing I'm going to, we are, are going to talk through to you yeah but it, it really if we continue eating the side because it gets into our bloodstream and becomes too much the body uses just a little of that uh, carbohydrate in your bloodstream and then tomorrow or maybe in the afternoon you repeat the same food in the evening you, so you're giving your your body too much work to change use all this uh, carbohydrate and that's what becomes fat in our bellies Anasa. And the built up of fat cause plaques in the vessels. Yeah. And before you know it, you're having cramps here yeah. and you know, you're having a heart attack. Mm. You, you don't even know. So protect your organs, mm. especially the kidneys, because when it go, that's it. You won't get another one. And um, your eyes as well. There's tiny blood vessels in the eyes uh, that caused by high blood pressure, diabetes and all that. But we will... We will do the diabetes um, topic another time because we are out of time. Thank you for listening and thank you for engaging. And I hope we do much better with our health yeah. and take care of ourselves. It's all about moderation yeah. and asking questions and little simple little exercise. You don't have to do vigorous exercise, but simple little exercise. Walking around as Minister Margaret say. Thank you and God bless you all. Amen. Thank you very much.